<clears throat> Okie dokie, everyone. Can I start off by saying either a good morning or good afternoon or even a good evening, depending on where you are around the world. And thank you for joining me tonight on tonight's latest episode of How I Webinar Trading Series for Stratton Markets. Now, tonight's episode is called How I Got to Understand Japanese Candlestick Patterns, Part 1. I'm doing it in uh, several parts because obviously it's quite a big field and it's a big subject. So I'm splitting it into two parts, maybe three parts. But tonight is only part one, written by myself, of course, which is James Truscothic. And I'm actually not the chief trading educator, I'm actually the head of investment research here at Stratton Markets. Now, before we get on to get on to tonight's agenda and an introduction on myself. I'm obviously talking about online trading and CFD trading. And like with all types of investments, it does indeed carry a great deal of risk. So I always suggest you do your own research and your diligence and know of the risks at hand before entering any trade. With that out of the way, this black and white image, which I'm now regretting sharing, to be honest, because I look actually quite wrinkly and old, actually. It's like someone's carved my face. This is me. Like I said, my name is uh, James Truscothic, and I'm the head of investment research here at Stratton Markets. I have, for my sins, over 20 years experience in the financial service industry. I actually started out as a mortgage broker back in the UK where I specialized in commercial mortgages and subprime mortgages. I then moved into pensions and alternative investments before moving into trading around about 13 to 14 years ago. I traded myself and I've traded for several product companies, um, one through uh, in Dubai for the uh, Dubai Gold and Commodity Exchange I've also ran a floor at the Philippine Stock Exchange, and I then moved into portfolio management. And like I say, I am the head of investment research, but one of my roles is education, so I do a lot of educating. I'm a published writer, and I've been published in several leading industry publications, including the likes of the Financial Times Advisor, Market Watch, which is the Wall Street Journal, The Street, um, several newspapers, just to name a few. I am an avid market commentator. I'm very passionate about this marketplace. And some say maybe even I might sound the, uh, like the sound of my own voice. And I'm a well-known public speaker, which leads on to that. And I've spoken at several industry events around the world, including the likes of Singapore, Dubai, as I've already mentioned, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain, South Africa, Joburg, Cape Town, Durban, London, obviously. Germany, Frankfurt, just to name a little bit of a few. Now, what I will say is this, though, like I said, one of my roles as the head of investment research is as an educator. Now, what I'm different, my approach is different when it comes to education is that I never once claim to be an expert. I don't do that. I do my webinars, my training sessions, and my market analysts not to give the golden answer or the golden goose or the holy grail because in the end of the day, that doesn't exist. Those who claim that they can, you have to ask them the question, then why do you do that for a living? I have a different approach, okay? I approach by I try and share both my successes as my failures, my experience, with the idea that you can take the information on and that you can find your own way, your own path, because trading at the end of the day is very personal to your character. So, a little bit about my approach. So tonight's agenda. 
because we're talking about candlestick patterns or Japanese candlestick patterns, we first of all, we'll talk about the different, slightly different chart styles. And then we'll talk about what actually are Japanese candlestick patterns. Then we'll do an introduction into some of the different patterns traders follow. Again, like I said, this is part one. Then we'll do a brief introduction, completely separate, but I thought I'd tease it for a future episode. Introduction to head and shoulders pattern. Then I'll do my future educational events for the remainder of April, followed off by the usual question and answer session. So let's start with the different chart types. And why in some ways, Candlestick patterns are favoured more by a lot of traders, especially um, currency traders. So we have obviously our dots, which would let me get my flashy pen here, make it all look nice. Which will basically show you where the market closed lower or higher, the green spots or green dots, as it's called, is where the market closed higher. Then we have our area. Again, will show us the general movement of an asset, both higher and lower. Then we have our line chart, which a lot of people favor, especially stock traders favor, if they're trying to identify a potential trend of an asset, especially stocks. Then we have, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Then we have our bar, which again gives us a lot more information about the line area and dot starts breaking down uh, potential open and close of the position and then we have the one we're talking about today which is the Japanese Japanese candlestick which gives us an awful lot more information I tell you what let me put myself on camera hope I don't look too scary Oh, there it is. Oh, no, do I do look scary? Sorry, I need to get rid of myself here. Because I look old. Forgive me, I do look old. Move me so out of the way so I don't have to see myself. But anyway, hello. So, anyway, so we have candlestick. And this is what candlesticks look like. And surprisingly, this illustration actually is giving us a lot of information. And in many ways, this is why this style is favoured by an awful lot of traders. Because a candlestick displays a movement in a price, in a more visually stimulating graphical form, I like the line, the dot, and the bar. Now, depending on your selected time period, each candle represents a chosen unit of time. So say, for example, you chose a 30-minute chart. This body here, or this whole candle here, represent 30 minutes in movement of that asset. Now, in this illustration, for illustration purposes, I have chosen the colors of green and red. Some choose white and black, whatever. But for this purposes, the candle or the body, which is green, represents the asset in that chosen time frame has closed higher, whereas the body, and again I'm talking about this here, the body of the candlestick, which is red, means that the asset during that period of time has closed lower. But there's more to it to just that. It's actually showing us a lot more information than just that. Now, if the body, for this illustration purposes, is green, and I've chosen green to show it's close to higher, 
the bottom of the body shows where the asset opened at that unit of time. The top of the body shows where the asset closed during that unit of time. For these illustration purposes, if it's red, the top of the body will show where the asset opened and the bottom of the body will show where the asset closed. Now these long lines here are called wigs, candlestick wigs. Very imaginative with their names. Now, the wigs don't change. The body color does, okay? If it's a bullish candle or a green candle, the top is where it closed, the bottom is where it's opened. A bearish, the top is where it opened and the bottom is where it closed if it's bearish. But for the wigs doesn't change because the top of the line or top of the wick will show the highest level the asset went to during that period of time on both bearish and bullish candles. The same as the bottom of the wick will show the lowest the asset went to during that unit of time. And the same with a bearish candle. Now straight away, why so many traders favor this is because it gives us so much more information. It's telling us where the asset opened, it's telling where the asset closed, it's telling us to where the high the asset went and the low the asset went, and it's giving us um, so much more information with the idea that, of course, traders can look a lot more deeper into this and potentially identify buying habits of the market. Now here's the theory. The theory is if you can look hard enough or you can identify hard enough, again, this is for technical traders, you could potentially see where the buyers and sellers are buying you at. And if you can recognize these patterns, then in theory, it gives you the idea that you can potentially see the future movement of the asset. Now, like I say, this is part one, because there's so many different candlestick patterns out there. So we're just gonna do a couple today. So let's go through a few basic candlestick patterns. Now, one of the easiest, one of the most popular is called the hammer and inverted hammer. The hammer is known as a bullish reversal pattern. Traders look for it as some believe that it indicates an end of a downtrend. So basically they're looking for it to appear at the end of when an asset is falling. It looks a little bit like this. So you've got a reasonably small body with a long wick at the bottom. But an inverted hammer, which basically is upside down from this hammer, can look like this. I don't know whether they call it a lollipop. It looks more like a lollipop to me. But okay, for them, they invented it. It's called the hammer and the inverted hammer. And here's an example. This is a euro dollar on a 30-minute chart. Remember... This has to come at the end of a downtrend for it to be a hammer pattern. So we have the euro under pressure against the dollar. What we have here, we have an inverted hammer and the market switches direction. Again, market under pressure, euro under pressure, sorry, should I say. And then we have a hammer and the market changes direction. Again, selling pressure, selling pressure, selling pressure. A hammer, the market changes direction. And then we have selling pressure, selling pressure. 
and then we have a vote hammer there. Here's another pattern. This is called the bullish engulfing pattern. It looks like this. The bullish engulfing pattern, again, this has to form an end of a downtrend. Potentially indicates a reversal in a downtrend. If the bearish candle, for this point of illustration is the red, is totally engulfed by a bullish candle, this could potentially indicate that the market direction may be changing. So let's have a look. This is the pound dollar on a daily of the cable. So downsend, downsend, downsend pressure, downtrend. We have our bearish candle then totally engulfed by a bullish candle, and indeed, let's go back to that, indeed, the direction then changes, and the market starts to change direction. Here's another pattern, it's called the morning star. Now, this actually is a three candlestick pattern, and it consists of one, bearish candle, a smaller bullish candle, followed by a larger bullish candle. Looks a little bit like this. We have our bearish candle, our small bullish candle, and our larger bullish candle. Again, traders tend to use this pattern, once again, to try and recognize a potential bullish reversal. So again, it's gonna come around the end of a downtrend. So this British pound, the US dollar on a 30 minute, the cable. Anybody trades the cable, just out of interest? Put a hands up if you do, especially at the moment the Brexit. Yeah, there you go. Oh, thank you, Peter, you do. Been a lot of fun now at the moment, hasn't it? Interesting currency pair, isn't it? Um, thank you, Peter. That's great. I love interaction. Okay, so this is the British pound US dollar on a 30 minute chart. So, downtrend, down, down, downtrend. We have a bearish candle here, smallish bullish candle here, and a larger bullish candle here, which then reverts to a change of direction. Here's another one, this is the shooting star. This pattern now looks like a hammer, an inverted hammer, but the big difference in this one, it has to fall at the top of an uptrend. The previous patterns I've discussed uh, have all been to do with downtrends. This one, this pattern has to form at the top of an uptrend. It looks like this very much like an inverted hammer. Again, same as with the other patterns where we're looking for the reversal of a downtrend, this pattern we're looking for the reversal of an uptrend has to form at the top of an uptrend, at the top of a uptrend. It looks a little bit like this. This is the Euro British pound. Great currency pair to trade. I like this one. Uh, do you ever trade this, Peter? Just hands up if you do. You do? Excellent. Good, 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 good. I do, I do find this pair really interesting. Some people find, some traders find it really boring, um, but I like this, I do like this pair. Um, again, that's not advice, of course. Just because I like it doesn't mean you need to trade it. Um, so this is the Euro British pound on a daily. You see an uptrend, there we go. For, you know, there we go, forms and the market changes direction. And then we have the engulfing bearish candle, which is surprise, surprise, the opposite of the engulfing bullish candle. Almost identical, 
but the big difference is it has to actually appear at the uh, you know an end of an uptrend for it to work so you have the bullish candle then engulfed by a bearish candle again this is used for traders to identify when an uptrend is about to reverse this is the dollar card or the loony on one hour there uptrend 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 reversed pretty good pattern there three white soldiers or in my case this illustration green soldiers but they're called white this is again a bullish candlestick pattern and traders look for them to try and identify a reversal of a downtrend looks a little bit like this as you got to note as you noticed here it's like three steps each time the body of the candle is on the bullish pattern is slightly bigger than the previous candle and again hang on. again this is going to be uh, at an end of a downtrend so again this is again a reversal a reversal pattern this is the pound dollar on the daily use the cable a lot I like the cable so we have a serious downtrend here. We have our three white soldiers here. Then we see a pretty much a strong reversal there. Dollar yen, again on a daily. Downtrend here. Our three white soldiers here. A strong reversal on the uptrend there. One more, and you tend to see this is a really rare, really rare, rare pattern to find. And to be fair, it hasn't got a real nice name. It's actually a horrible name, but you know, I don't invent the names. This one's called the abandoned baby, and again, it's a bullish reversal pattern. Um. And it looks a little bit like this. Again, you can you can tend to see these in stocks, actually. Shares, you tend to see this a lot, but you can actually see in all of them, but shares in particular, you can see them. And this is where you obviously have the market under pressure. And then what you tend to see, you see a very small body candle with a gap. Opens with a gap. And then you see the next bullish candle open with quite a bit of a bit of a space. Now, like I say, this is the key candle. It's got to look a little bit like this, okay? Because it opens with a gap from the previous candle, uh, candle open and close. Um, but like I say, the open and close of the asset, it's got to be small. So it's got to have a very small body, very small body. So you see very like a thin line. Okay, and though this pattern is extremely rare, it is very useful if you can identify it to know that a change in direction is about to happen. And again, here we go. We have Amazon. I use I'm using currencies a lot because I, I I know currencies, but I look at uh, I use Amazon to show this illustration. It's Amazon, downtrend, then you have the abandoned baby. The next candle opens with a massive gap from the abandoned baby. And again, we have a reversal. Now, just to do a teaser for future episodes. And of course, I'll do a, a candlestick pattern part two later down the line. But let's do a little bit, or talk a little bit, something about other patterns. And this is the head and shoulder pattern, which is very famous. And it looks a little bit like this. You see the market go up, go down, go up, go down, go up, go higher up, and go down, go up, go down. Here's the key. You see it form like a head and shoulder. That's the head. That's the shoulder. 
that's the second shoulder. And the level, when we see this pattern we're interested in, is here. This is called the neckline. Because we're interested when we see this come down, not this time, but this time. This is when we're looking for it to possibly break down further down. So this is euro dollar on the daily. You see a shoulder, you see a head, you see a potential neckline, you see a second shoulder. So we know that here is the neckline, so it's the level we're watching for it to break down and trade downwards. British pound, US dollar, one hour. Can everybody see the pattern here? Shoulder, head, neckline, second so shoulder. So we know that is the level we need to be interested in to watch a potential reversal. This is the dollar yen, one hour. It's a clearer pattern. This is lovely, this one. Neckline. Wait for it. Form the second shoulder. And this is the time we are interested to watch it. Again, that's just a teaser. We'll do a lot more in depth on head and shoulders and other chart patterns. Like harmonic patterns, again, I'll do an extension of other episodes I've done on that. But here's a little teaser for that. Anyway, future educational events for the rest of April includes the following. On the 23rd of April is how I got to understand momentum indicators, both lagging and leading. We'll be discussing that on the 23rd. Then on the 30th of April, I'll be doing an episode of how I got to understand pivot points. Again, more technically based. And then, of course, I'll release my May schedule. If you wish to speak to me, by all means, you can contact me by email. My email address is james at strattonmarkets.com. Or, if you'd like, you can join my massive following. I'm lying. It's very small following on my Twitter account. Well, I do talk about, obviously, market updates in my own particular fashion. Um, and indeed, you can direct message me on Twitter as well. My handle is at jtroscothic, so feel free to contact me there. Now, before I move on to any questions, of course, I've been talking about online trading and CF tra uh, CFD trading. And like with all types of investments, it does indeed carry a great deal of risk. So I do suggest you do your research and your due diligence and know the risk is at hand before entering any trade. With that out of the way, is there any questions at all? Anyone would like to ask me anything in related to today's episode or maybe anything else or maybe other subjects? And if I know the answer, I might not do, but if I do, I'm more than happy to answer it for you. Any questions at all? Well, are you generally sick of my voice already? I have a question. <laughs> oh, Colin, you are, oh, thank you, Colin. I really appreciate that, thank you. Nella. Thank you, Colin. I'm touched by that. Anyway, uh, Peter Duffy, a uh, uh, great uh, question. Do you have any sessions involving moving averages? Yes, I've done several uh, episodes on moving averages, both moving average crossover and uh, exponential moving averages, the difference, and the simple moving averages. I've also done several pieces on the MACD, also moving averages, conversions, divergence as well. So I've done that. Um, I could do a brand new episode on that if that's something we should be interested in. Uh, so, Peter, quick question to you, so I can know what I could possibly write. Is there any? I mean, how do you use? Do you use moving averages? Clearly, you do. You know, do you? How do you use them? 
at the moment. We're using moving averages for spotting the trend or spotting for the changes in the trend. Again, to support and resistance as well. How do you personally use them? Okay, 50 minutes. Okay. What number do you use? You use 10, 9, 12, 26. What number do you set for your moving average? Just out of interest. Okay, I so see you, you do like a fan. Okay, <laughs> very good. Good, Peter. Very good. Very good. Does it does it work for you? Is is this working for you? Okay, very good, very good, very good, Peter. Good for you. Is it simple or uh, EPA you're using? simple okay excellent well look for, for one if it's working for you okay um, then as long as you're keeping some sort of journal and you're registering your um, successes and all this as well and you're obviously using proper risk management on it then that's great Peter I would suggest um, you know you keep testing it I do do a lot of pieces on moving averages because obviously moving averages can give you a lot of hint on buying behavior and pattern behavior. I like the crossover, I like exponential moving averages, but I wouldn't suggest, you know, if it's working, then I would suggest you change it just as long as you, you're working it. Um, but yeah, I definitely will do episodes, but that's very, very good. You trade with us actively, Peter? Exponential, again, simple, the big difference between the simple and uh, exponential is that it really is this. Okay, simple will take um, obviously the closing price of an asset over a period of time, divide it, and all this. Exponential does the same, but it takes more focus on the recent closing prices of an asset. So, say for example, you have 10 sessions, simple moving average will take all 10 sessions closing price, add it all together, divide it, blah, blah, blah. blah. Whereas in, uh, EMA will take the 10, but will have more of a focus on the more recent closing prices of an asset. So it will focus on, say, closing price of an asset on session 8, 9, and 10. And that, in some people, will tend to favor because potentially it will give more of a head up of the current market sentiment or the current market behavior of an asset. So that's why, you know, again, it tends to favor. But I will do uh, an episode. Um, who's your account manager, Peter? Who's your account manager? Who's looking after you here at Stratton? Do you know who your account manager is? Or someone who's looking after you? Must have made a lasting impression. Got no winner present. 
Oh, okay. Have you been talking with anybody in particular? The reason why I ask is that I can talk to that individual and I can maybe give them some uh, videos or other episodes I've done so that it can then send it out to you. Like I, like I said, I did one a good couple of months ago on EMA and the difference between simple and EMA. Um, I get that over to you in the crossover. You have a demo account. Okay, are you doing any trading on a demo account, Peter? Is that right? I think you one camera, I'm chewing a pen. Smoker, sorry, my fault. Okay. Oh, you've traded, you, you trade there, yeah? Oh, good, very good. Good for you. Okay, well, like I say, by all means, test out, you know. Is that uh, their own platform? Is it MT4, man? <laughs> Good. Look, look, like I say, obviously, when whoever you have an account manager with, or whoever you discuss, or you can indeed, to be fair, let me go back. Here we go. And follow me on Twitter if you like. To my massive following, no, I'm joking. You can email me, obviously, at Stratton. I'm happy to share some episodes I've done previously, if you might have a look on MAs and stuff like that. But that, that's really good. Hey, no problem. It's what I'm here to do, buddy. It's my job. Well, part of my job is to try and, you know, help the way I can. Do you have any other questions for me, Peter? <laughs> no problem. But did you enjoy it? Did you find it useful at least? Was it good? Do you find it interesting? There's a huge variety of patterns for candlesticks, but I will do more in the future and share more stuff in the future, definitely. Peter and Colin and everybody else. Colin, great to see you again. Peter, really nice to see you. Hope to see you next week on the ladies episode as well. If there's no further questions, and I clearly think you're probably all done and fed up with me by now, sick of my voice, I'll let you all find people go, but a big thank you again for everybody turning up. Especially a shout out to Peter. I love the interaction, my friend. I love the questions. Please keep doing that because otherwise, I guess it gets quite lonely. To be honest, doing this on my own. It's lonely, so it's nice to have a bit of interaction and questions. So, big shout out to Peter. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much, mate. Big shout out to Colin. Great to see you again. Look forward to seeing you all next week. Till next time, depending where you are around the world, can I ever say either a good morning, good afternoon, or even a good evening? depending on where you are around the world. Till next time, every single one of you, trade safe.